Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all Denarians on the go and in the know. Like, subscribe, and share with your fellow Denarian friends. To help support our channel we now accept tips using the blockchain-based Brave Browser MBAV tokens. It makes a huge difference and is very much appreciated. To those of you that made a contribution, I thank you. If you are interested in using the latest technology, the blockchain-based Secure Brave Browser, the link is in the description below. You can be earning cryptocurrency as you surf the internet as you normally do. Ad blockers are in place to prevent all those unwanted bothersome ads as well as your internet speed will increase significantly. I highly recommend it, as it is the only browser I will use on my desktop and my phone. It was made by the same programmer that made the Firefox browser and is super secure and as I stated earlier, based on the new blockchain technology of today. Did I mention they pay you, the user, for using their browser? First article of interest for today, a proposed project in which the Kurdish blocs give up executive positions in the government of Muhammad Alawi and the appointment of a coordinator between Baghdad and Erbil. Deputy Hashir Abdullah, on Sunday, February 9, 2020, suggested that the Kurdish political blocs give up all executive positions in the government of Muhammad Tafik Alawi and content themselves with appointing a person as a coordinator between the federal government and the Kurdistan regional government to assume the outstanding files between Baghdad and Erbil, the most important of which is the distribution of power and wealth, and resolve the issue of the disputed areas according to the Articles of the Iraqi Constitution. Abdullah said in a statement to the Obelisk, that the Kurds' relinquishment of executive positions in the federal government must be met with serious steps and tireless work to open all outstanding files, especially the constitutional rights of the people of Kurdistan and resolve the problem of the disputed areas and the issue of the distribution of wealth and power according to the Articles of the Iraqi Constitution, the issue of Peshmerga salaries and the rest outstanding problems. Abdullah explained. The resolution of these files for the citizens of the Kurdistan region is much more important than the participation of Kurdish political blocs in executive positions in the federal government, and the time has come for the region's participation in the federal government to be of an institutional nature and not my party, and the government must form a new institutional after it has been proven previous experiences the futility of forming a party government reproduces previous failures and does not meet the aspirations of the people. And if this government is formed at least let it be different from its predecessor in terms of formation and participation. Next article of interest, Ministerial Cabinet within 10 days. On Sunday, February 9, 2020, a member of the Construction Alliance, Hussein Arab, revealed the scenes of forming the new government headed by Prime Minister-designate Mohammed Tafik Alawi. Arabs said in statements to local media that Allah we discussed with all political blocs the government formation of partisanship free. He confirmed the completion of a large part of the cabinet, which will be 23 ministers, likely to be announced within 10 days. He mentioned that there is a green light to move the government according to what the designated prime minister wants, and according to expectations, he can announce his cabinet in 10 to 15 days. He added that the next formation will consist of 23 ministers, the same number of ministers of the resigned government. He pointed out that the House of Representatives is free to choose or reject every minister who does not have the level of responsibility or ability required to lead a ministry. Arabs affirmed that Allah we chose a large part of the government formation, and there are only simple things left to complete but he will not announce any name until they are presented to the House of Representatives. He pointed out that parliamentarians advised the Prime Minister to choose personalities from the womb of ministries who were in the rank of Director General or below or higher for their knowledge of the ministry's details, in addition to adopting the principle of competence in selecting ministers. Next article of interest. The Central Bank launches an initiative to advance the national economy. Member of the Iraqi Economic Council, Ghadir al adder revealed today, Sunday, the importance of the central bank's industrial initiative on the national economy. al adder said in a statement that the Tigris received a copy of it, 
that this initiative includes granting banking facilities to finance the purchase of raw materials and production requirements, machinery and equipment and production lines with the aim of increasing the production capacity of Iraqi factories. Al Adder called on all government and private sectors of the state and the media and press to support this initiative, in order to employ the largest number of workers in small, medium and large industrial projects, and to ensure the sustainability of the local industry and cash liquidity within the markets. In this next article, you will learn how the blockchain decentralized ledger technology can help the CBI in its daily transactions worldwide, and the keyword here is liquidity. I mentioned this in yesterday's newsletter as well, and in my opinion XRP is a key factor in the upcoming global reset. At the time of this recording, it is only 28 cents a coin. This cryptocurrency coin XRP could very well one day be more valuable than Bitcoin, which just passed $10,000 a coin. Get my drift. I am not advising, I am simply making you aware of possibilities. As Foot Forward says, I probably should not be saying this, and you should probably not be listening to me, lol, with that said, let's move forward, pun intended. Enabling Global Real-Time Payments Everywhere to Everyone In early November, Ripple held its third annual Swell Conference for the first time in Asia, where we had the chance to experience insightful keynotes from the world's most trusted voices in financial services, payments, technology and policy. We walked away from Swell with one question weighing on our minds. Humanity has been able to put a man on the moon, we can stream video from space and stop the spread of plague. However, we still aren't able to instantly send money across borders or perform a wire transfer at a bank on Sunday. Why? Changing the way the game is played. Southeast Asia has become a hotbed for fintech innovation. Among the region's most notable startups include cashless payments and mobile wallets such as GrabPay, GoPay and Paytm, which compete against the likes of established global incumbents such as Western Union and Apple Pay. As a new, inherently digital generation enters the working world and drives consumption in the region, businesses are doubling down on redefining the customer experience. In the payment space, going cashless brings added convenience and speed for users. In fact, payments via mobile wallets are now beating out credit cards in countries such as Indonesia, Thailand, and Vietnam. Yet, for all the advancements made in mobile payments, little work has been done to solve the problems of cross-border payments. The World Bank estimates the average remittance costs more than 7% of the amount sent, with traditional remittances requiring numerous debits and credits across different accounts to pass on the value of money from sender to receiver. The current infrastructure for cross-border payments cannot meet the needs of today's individuals. Five days to clear a check is too long for a family trying to make rent or the mother trying to keep her kids in school. Payments should be instantaneous to ensure that their day-to-day -day living does not get disrupted. The situation on the ground. Southeast Asia has been gaining prominence as a startup battleground due to the massive amounts of venture capital flowing into the region, not to mention the businesses moving in looking to capitalize on an economy growing in spending power. As the region moves toward the goal of a united ASEAN economy to encourage greater cross-border trade, having efficient cross-border payment solutions in place is key to establish a foothold in the region and drive business growth. However, global payments today are fragmented as businesses need to partner with several different financial institutions, networks and or payment service providers in order to create connections where needed. These connections are cumbersome and expensive, with no standardization. Take, for example, a business operating with its headquarters in Hong Kong. They partner with a bank in Singapore to transfer money between countries, but then need to move money to Malaysia and partner with another institution there and continue to do the same for every country in Southeast Asia. In 2016, a McKinsey report estimated the average U.S. bank would take between $25 and $35 USD to process a cross-border payment, roughly 10 times the price of an average domestic payment. The Economist likewise estimated the cost of remittances to come in at around 7% of the amount to be transferred, a modern-day solution for an age-old problem.
how are overseas foreign workers sending their money back home? Perhaps by using an old-fashioned bank transfer and incurring significant costs in the process. We want to change that. At Swell, we were proud to announce more than 300 customers use our solutions to transfer money all around the world, half of which are from the APAC region. Leveraging players such as Siam Commercial Bank, SBI Raymond and them, we are confident that cross-border payments can become truly frictionless using blockchain. Blockchain technology and digital assets have the potential to change the entire finance industry. These blockchain-powered payments networks enable cross-border payments to be hassle-free by having a standard set of technical specifications and standards, reducing confusion and ensuring that all members of the network have access to the same technology. Using blockchain, in this case, the XRP ledger, transactions can be settled in seconds with on-demand liquidity, ODL, and cost a fraction of a cent lowering costs for the sender and for the intermediaries involved in the entire process. Payments can be routed from the point of origin to the beneficiary almost immediately, and recipients stand to gain the lion's share of the original sum that was remitted to them. Money transfer app SendFront uses Ripple and Net's ODL service to transfer money. CEO David Lighton mentioned that blockchain helps remove the need for working capital to enable cross-border transfers. Thus. Liquidity can now be sourced on demand, reducing transaction costs by up to 75%. Likewise, Banco Santander's head of innovation at Metzger Sori Mittens is being performed and completed in a mere 4-5 to five clicks through the Ripple and it powered money transfer app, OnePayFX. This is in stark contrast with traditional methods of remittance, which often take days to process and come with hefty fees. Just as data flows around the world in a matter of seconds, our money should be able to do the same. Emerging technologies such as blockchain technology are capable of powering the infrastructure to make such transfers possible, and as a hub for fintech innovation, businesses and consumers in Southeast Asia are ready to reap the benefits that fintech brings, especially when it comes to cross-border payments. Hit the like and subscribe button to be alerted as more articles of interest are posted. Be sure to visit my Denarian blog for all of today's articles of interest and find me on Facebook as I also post them on there as well. Pick up your free trial copy of the newly upgraded currency exchange planner before you leave. Use the promo code, the Denarian, to get 25% off at checkout when you decide to unleash the full planner's abilities along with the mobile application added free for being my subscriber, pick up yours today. With the currency exchange planner on your team, the banks don't have a chance of taking advantage of your newfound wealth. Register today as an affiliate with the Gold Savings Carrot Bar program. If you do not keep your savings in an real asset like gold, you risk everything as the fiat system fails. Protect your family's wealth today in physical gold, as tomorrow may be too late. This program is made so even low-income people can buy gold, by offering it one gram at a time, which makes it affordable to everyone. Get involved today, it's free to register and secure your family's savings tomorrow. You can always turn gold back into any kind of fiat money you want or need later. The gold will always be in your possession not the banks who do not care about your well-being. Above all the gold will retain its purchasing power in good times as well as bad, the dollar I assure you will not. Fiat currencies are based on debt, and are designed to fail over time. Ask yourself this. Why are all the central banks loading up on gold lately, and running from the current depreciating fiat US dollar? Do you think they do not know what is coming? Get yourself protected today, before it's too late. Both of the links to these invaluable programs are available in the description box below this video. Go check them out. Knowledge is power. Over and out. The Denarian.